Okay, welcome back, guys. All right, look, let's let's go through this. In terms of actual data and what we got, there's nothing. Um, we've got. Jolt's job openings, another made-up figure. We've got NISA GDP estimate. Uh, so there's actually no data across the slate at all this afternoon. Uh, Fed speakers uh, have been and gone. Uh, there's one later, Fed's Evans. But again, this is all paling into insignificance. Um, in terms of supply, some very, very short-term four-week bills and a three-year note. So nothing in terms of what you need to be paying attention to there. Now, of course, it is all about the election. And I'm not going to bore people too much and too long um, because I think the prep work has been huge on this. I mean, I don't want to sit here and... Uh, necessarily pontificate in the same vein as every sort of other education provider might and exploit it and use it as a a major sort of marketing tool um, and I think the preparation that's out there everybody really really should and have to know you know what is going on by now especially if they are going to trade it um, so the way it sort of stands is as I said earlier we're looking at the moment a Clinton lead. The majority of bookies are pricing in a Clinton win, uh, which doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to happen, but that is the more logical outcome to what might happen this evening. There are still, however, some key swing states. Now, notably, these are Florida, Pennsylvania, Ohio, North Carolina, Virginia, Arizona. Colorado, Nevada, Iowa, New Hampshire, and Maine. As it stands, Clinton, if everything goes according to plan, Clinton has got 203 votes out of the 270 that she needs, with Donald Trump at 164. So the swing states allow for 171 votes still to count and Hillary Clinton actually doesn't need as many as Donald Trump she needs the 67 rather than you know the hundred and however many um, that's what she needs from the swing states it really comes down to a few you know the bigger numbers the bigger electoral votes are in Florida Pennsylvania and Ohio um, they are the big areas that if she were to take is going to pretty much, you know, see her into the White House. Um, however, you know, if all of those do go to Donald Trump, then he, you know, he doesn't win. You know, of course, if she got those, she wins. If he gets them, he still needs another 29 votes out of about 100 that would be left. Um, now, what we're looking at in terms of the expectation of tonight is that generally the polling finishes um, at around midnight our time um, so that's really when it looks to all be sort of wrapped up and finished for for the UK participants which generally means I mean some of these are later um, some of these do come in very late so for example um, you know, Iowa, which is one of the key swings, is not until 3 o'clock in the morning. Nevada's 3 o'clock in the morning. So there are plenty of very, very late ones coming in. Um, but the majority of them are around about uh, midnight to 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. And of course, within an hour and a half of these, we will start getting exit polls. Uh, and the market will move on exit polls. For me, even if... An area is likely to be called, you know, say for example, it's uh, an area which is, um, you know, meant to be going to Hillary Clinton. Even if it goes that way, I still think you're going to get market fluctuations. I still think you're going to see a Clinton win and we pop up, uh, a Trump win in a Trump state and will come down. There will, for me, be lots of mini market fluctuations. 
of course as and when these swing votes come in you know those main swing votes of course that's when you're going to get much more um, of the uh, swings in terms of what the market is going to do so again there are lots of these big big states the ones that are worth a lot of electoral votes Florida Pennsylvania is worth 20, Ohio is worth 18, Michigan and Georgia are both worth 16, North Carolina 15, Virginia 13 and then it gets a bit smaller down to uh, sort of New Mexico, New Hampshire and Maine. Um, so this is how you know this is how it stands, this is how we are looking at at the moment um, with with Hillary having the edge and the most likely outcome uh, being that it goes towards her um, but still some of those swing states and if people come out and vote with the emotion that they did on Brexit uh, then we will certainly see these these go towards um, you know Donald Trump if you look at some of these key states you look at Florida they are neck and neck uh, Pennsylvania Clinton does have a little bit of a lead however Iowa um, Donald Trump has a, a lead at the moment so it's Keenly contested, even though it does seem to slightly favour. The path seems a little bit um, clearer for Miss Mrs Clinton. Um, in terms of advertising, we were discussing this earlier. The amount of money that has been pumped into Hillary Clinton's campaign vastly actually outweighs that of Donald Trump which is maybe something that over in the UK we might not have considered and of course all the bookies uh, have have pretty much got it favoured as a Hillary Clinton win. In terms of market context then um, of course it seems pretty clear that the status quo is that people would like and consider uh, Clinton getting in much more favourable. So you should see the S&P rally. Of course, this was when she got um, pardoned for her emails. We had a very good, solid move up. Yesterday, we stayed massively higher. We churned an awful lot of volume. I mean, look at this. I mean, this is what we did. We pumped higher, even opening higher, we pumped higher, and then we just churned huge volume right under VPOC. So for Hillary Clinton to get in, it is a favoured S&P scenario. You will see the S&P rally. Um, for me, is it going to get to all-time highs? It probably could. Um, my big fear is that we will just sit in another range until the end of the year, but I do think that that's what could happen. I think we could end up back up here and stay here for the rest of the year. I think the Treasuries will come off. Um, I think that will sort of move its way back down to the bottom end of the range that we have been seeing. Of course, focus might then start to shift a little bit towards the the imminent rate hike. I think as well, you've got to bear in mind that if Hillary Clinton does get in, a rate hike is pretty much set on the cards and that will start getting factored in pretty quickly. You will see the dollar rally. You will see the cable and the euro sell off. Um, of course, bless our Mexican peso, you will also see that rally. And all of the other correlated markets for me, your buns will be lower, uh, your stocks will be higher, is how I view things and how I think things are going to pan out. Of course, the vice versa for Mr. Donald Trump, um, the market will be absolutely scared beyond its wits. Um, you will see the dollar um, come off, so i.e. euro and cable positives. You will see the Mexican collapse. I think you'll see the S&P come off quite hard, dragging European equities with them. Um, the 10 years is an interesting one. I think it is likely to go up, but of course what you must realise is that probably the buns will outperform the 10 years is the best way of saying it, because of course with Donald Trump in charge, moving up, you know, the... The sort of thinking it through logically, you're likely to see a little bit of yields rise actually as people are not 
considering maybe America quite the ultimate safe haven um, that it maybe once was. And so you might see yields crop up a little bit there, sort of halting the 10-year in its path a touch. But, you know, it will go up. Knee-jerk reaction, absolutely, it will rally. I just feel the Bund could outperform a rally based on... Um, you know, what would happen with maybe the ratings and the credit ratings and the general risk factor that comes with investing in American bonds would be actually a, a tiny bit higher. Um, and I think that would be reflected in the yields. In terms of where we sit, perfectly in balance at the moment for the 10 year, of course. Uh, we tagged the middle VPOC yesterday. We're likely to remain in balance for the rest of today. I'm not going to drone and bore you with, with levels because there will be absolutely no point in trading off levels in terms of what this market is going to do. For the meantime, however, of course, yesterday was a very tight holding pattern of six ticks. I think it's likely to remain a tight holding pattern until we see the election. You know, if anything, the only thing you might see is maybe we take out, because we just proximity-wise, we might just dribble through this low, find a bit of support very, very soon thereafter, and maybe just a touch of safe haven buying. I certainly think that's what we've seen in the Bund. I think there's been just an, an edge of safe haven buying in here. However, you've got to admit, it was another pretty decent call on the half seven stream. We have remained in an inside day. We haven't breached either of them. The O3 area held beautifully um, this morning. That was one of our key areas that we spoke about at half seven this morning. And of course, we have pushed up to VPOC, which is at 45. And just one other note as well, just completing this flag, which is going to get opened through tomorrow in no doubt um, but just completing this flag we hit this trend line that I mentioned this morning as well to the tick so pretty much uh, what we would have felt uh, and what we were looking for this morning and of course now just dribbling into a little bit of calm before what is inevitably going to be a storm um, so that's it for me that's I'm not going to go I think that's all you need to know about the election. Make sure you've got your plans in place. Make sure you've just got it written down on a piece of paper next to you in a pad. Just make sure you know what is what these key states are. There's been some fantastic prep across here. I mean, you don't have to look far to see some really wonderful, wonderful prep. Everyone has been on it. You know, I've had so many emails um, regards, you know, the election it is i don't want to fall into the um the whole of using this election as marketing because i do think it's incredibly um serious um what is likely to happen with this election um but make sure you you have the details make sure you know those swing states make sure that you have them with them um and it should be a fantastic opportunity all right guys well look i will be back on at two i'm not going to have a lot to say of course because um i've covered off the election here and i'm not going to be giving you many levels in the s p but i will come on to wish you well and speak to you about the S&P in 45 minutes time. Until then, take care, trade professionally, or even better, don't trade until the election. Thanks guys.